so I've seen Tenet. A part of me genuinely wasn't sure if I would be sat here saying that in 2020, but here we are, and boy does it feel good. So I don't think I really need to do much explaining on what Tenet is really, but I will for the what one of you out there thinking, is it a type of fruit? It's not, so sorry to disappoint you. It's actually a new film uh, from Mr. Christopher Nolan. That flowed nicely. And after 2017's war epic Dunkirk, which was about Dunkirk. He's finally back with an espionage thriller, which is injected with his typical kind of temporal recontextualizing. I'm trying to avoid saying time travel because he's insisting it's, it's not about time travel. That's what he's saying. Not about time travel. Well, what the hell is it then, Christopher? Because last time I checked, they were traveling, Christopher. And also, it seemed a hell of a lot to do with time. Christopher. I'm not going to run through the plot like I typically would here with Tenet because even if I could do that, which I can't, I think you'd probably lose me as soon as I start mentioning espionage backwards time stuff. There's no real way to sum this one up, so we're going to skip that part of the review. But this film has a lot riding on it. I mean, cinemas have been closed for months now. Summer wasn't really summer at all in terms of films. I mean, it didn't exist, did it? It just, it, nothing was there. So it's really no exaggeration to say that pretty much all eyes have been on Tenet to save cinema, in quotation marks, whatever that means, and deliver some goods in the process. I mean, save cinema first, but it, it would be nice if it was good, wouldn't it? Also had a bit of extra baggage in that it was a new Christmas Christopher Nolan film and that doesn't just sort of happen and the main question I guess is did it deliver in short yeah it did I had a fucking blast with Tenet I thought it was wicked but and much like the human anatomy there is a but in a film as big as this one is it doesn't quite land everything that I think it wanted to and that I wanted it to but we'll get onto that in a little bit because first and foremost it has to be said this film is huge it's ruddy massive from the set pieces to the story to the sound of it all this film is is doing a lot with its two and a half hour runtime. And in terms of a kind of pure sensory cinema experience, it's kind of fucking astonishing. It's, it's crazy, this film. Nolan here continues his preference for sort of in-camera practical visual effects and in so delivers some of his most impressive sort of visual stuff from his career so far. It's maybe not always quite as obviously mind-bending as like uh, the corridors in Inception or like the black holes in Interstellar, but it is mind-blowing. Watching a building unexplode and then explode in the same shot isn't something I knew I wanted to see until it was just happening in front of me and then I ticked it off my bucket list. And it is photographed brilliantly by longtime Nolan collaborator Hoyt Van Hoytema. It's the best name ever. It's just, it's just the best name ever. I had to bring it up. Who follows the action here in a way which just it just feels right, if that makes much sense. It's not a spoiler really to say that the film's dealing with, with time. Who saw that one coming, am I right? But it is dealing with time in interesting ways here. And I really appreciated the way that the camera's never really distracted by that. All of the kind of time mind-bending stuff that we come to expect from a Nolan film, it's all there, it's all happening, but it's in the small details, it's in the periphery of a lot of frames, in that sort of way that you, you might miss it if you're not quite paying attention to certain bits, rather than always being the, the central focus of the frame. The camera's not just like, whoa, look at this crazy thing. It's absorbing it all in the background in the world around these characters, which I think is a subtle and infinitely more captivating way of exploring the world around the characters. I really dug it. And pair that with an awesome score, and it's just a sensory delight, this film. Performance-wise, I really enjoyed everyone in this film. It's led by John David Washington, who you might know from Black Klansman most recently. But he delivers on just the right level of kind of charm, charisma, confidence, but also naivety that you might come to expect typically from a kind of espionage spy main character. But we've also got Rob Robert Pattinson, who's delivering this equally as brilliant, savvy performance next to him, as I guess is John David Washington's kind of sidekick in the film. They've got a really enjoyable chemistry, which means that it's so much fun to watch them together on screen, even if half the time I didn't know what the fuck they were doing or talking about. It's just fun to sit back and think, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but at least you're having a good time. Never surrender to the but that sort of brings me on to the main thing about Tenet, and that is that I can't in good faith sit here and tell you that I knew exactly what was happening at all points in this film. It absolutely demands your attention in a way that if you miss even one bit of dialogue or one small moment, you could very much find yourself lost for a large portion of this film's runtime. And I understand how that can be really unsatisfying in a film, especially watching something like Tenet, but I don't quite mind that as much as I know others do. 
Because for me, I, I always had trust that Nolan would clarify certain things that I need clarifying later on in the film. And he does. And things do begin to click into place. And so for that reason, I think the second half of this film is much more satisfying in the moment because those puzzle pieces are beginning to slot into place. I think in a really, really satisfying way. But I do think undeniably, he's beginning to sort of stretch that line between giving your audience just enough to keep them going and losing them completely. And as a result of this, I think the entire film feels incredibly retrospective in terms of its characters, its narrative, its concepts, in that the information that we'd typically expect to get in a scene is given to us much later. And it's up to us later on in the film to be able to piece that information back into the story we've already seen. And so you get a lot of those kind of, oh, that's, that's what that was moments in the film. There's a lot of them and I find them incredibly satisfying, but I can definitely understand how it might be a little too late for some people in the audience. And I suppose this is nothing really new from Nolan as a filmmaker. We've seen him do this in pretty much all his films to varying degrees, so it shouldn't really come as a surprise. But here, definitely more than any of his previous films, it's something that I felt much more conscious about as I was watching it. And I am a little bit torn about what that does for the film overall. Because on the one hand, I love having to put the pieces of the puzzle together as an audience member, and I like the way it doesn't hold your hand and it lets you do the thinking work yourself. I think it's really satisfying after the film as well. I've really enjoyed thinking about Tenet as I've gone through my days afterwards. I haven't really stopped thinking about it, so that's something in itself, I guess. But on the other hand, in the film itself, I do think it can sort of get in the way of some of the other things that Nolan's quite clearly trying to pull off here. And one of those main things that I just don't think Tenet quite lands as much as it thinks it is or is trying to is the kind of the heart of the film, I guess. And that's not to say I didn't care for the characters in this film. I didn't care about certain things that were going on because I did. It, it's not like that just isn't here in the film. But there are certain threads of the story which exist sort of outside of the main conceptual time stuff, which are there to kind of ground our characters in something relatable, in something that has a human edge to it so we can sympathize with things. You know, give the film some more stakes outside of the whole like end of the world thing, which are stakes in themselves. And I appreciate that this kind of human side of things exists in a film, but when it's such a kind of retrospective puzzle of a story and you're constantly having to deal with new bits of information every second that you're dealing with, that kind of heart of the film can often feel like A, it's getting a bit lost, and B, when it is arriving, it's feeling a bit jammed into scenes. And it definitely doesn't help as well that the dialogue in those moments can feel so on the nose and overt. The screenplay is very sort of typical, I guess, of Nolan at this point in that it's got a lot of information that it needs to drop on the viewer. Lots of exposition happening throughout this film. And that works for me when we're dealing with fucking quantum mechanics, right? When we're dealing with quantum physics, I'm happy to have exposition drop to me because you guessed it, I don't know anything about quantum physics. But as soon as that switch is kind of flicked to the emotional core of the film, all of that very overt and on the nose dialogue suddenly feels much more half assed and it does not work really for the emotional character driven side of the story. It feels like unearned, like it hasn't done the groundwork to make me care about these things. It's just telling me that I should care about these things. It sort of reminds me a lot of Anne Hathaway stuff in Interstellar where the film would just kind of pause to be like, hey, love love's gonna get us through this everyone we can all just love and stick together and it'll do it now if you don't mind i've just got to go deal with some interdimensional time travel and some fifth dimensional beings over here for a second so i'll just be right back it's absolutely not as bad here in tenet as it was in say interstellar uh, but it definitely is still present in some form it does have a habit of sort of pausing things very quickly just to be like hey just in case you forgot here's why you should care here's a character just saying something about that now we'll just get back to the time stuff but i do want to be clear that i didn't find that huge hugely distracting. I don't think it derailed anything for me, but it did just feel like if it had landed that much better, we might have been sat here looking at an all-timer of a film. And I think undeniably that kind of gives Tenet kind of a messy feel, for better or worse, in a way which I've honestly never really felt while watching a Nolan film before. And I think part of that comes down to how much it's trying to squeeze into its runtime. And it's not a short runtime. This film is two and a half hours long. That's not a short film. And to its credit, it never drags. I was never bored. It absolutely flew by for me. But it is so breakneck in a way it just 
absolutely plows through all of the information in this film that it can sometimes feel like it's going just a little bit too fast. You know, one minute Washington and Pattinson are walking down the street discussing how they're going to do something. Literally the next scene they're doing it. And then the next scene Washington's in Mumbai. And once things start to click into place, that breakneck speed actually starts to really work in the film's favor. But I do think for that first sort of hour of this film, it is just fucking relentless. It can feel a lot like the film's one step ahead of you, and that can be satisfying, but it can also be kind of frustrating as a viewer because you can't help but feel like even though you're not supposed to know everything, at times, it feels like the film isn't quite succeeding in being as efficient as it's trying to be in getting the information across to you. But that being said, it absolutely does succeed in my opinion, in terms of spectacle and in terms of being able to put this puzzle together in a really, really satisfying way. Because it is crazy. It's, it's a crazy film. It's incredibly over the top in certain aspects. And even though I have got those problems with it, it never really detracted from my viewing experience. I was always having fun. I was always having a blast, even if I was very confused and didn't know really what was going on in certain scenes. The problems I have with it, they don't necessarily ever get in the way of its main goal, which is just to be an espionage thriller done in a unique and interesting way. And I think it absolutely succeeds at that. It doesn't land everything, but I think a lot of the stuff it's trying to do, it definitely pulls off. And sure, at this point, I think Nolan as a filmmaker can be very easily parodied. And there is a lot of that stuff in this film. A lot of those things that people that really don't like Nolan love to point out to people that do like Nolan are present in this film. If you found yourself thinking, I'm getting a little bit tired of all that time stuff Nolan keeps doing, you probably not gonna like this one. But I am genuinely still in awe at a lot of the stuff he's able to pull off here. There's certain scenes where I'm just like, how do you begin to put this together? And how do you even begin to pull it off on set? I don't know. It's absolutely a film which demands repeat viewings. It needs to be rewatched and dissected after the fact to be able to fully appreciate it, I think. And for a lot of people, I know that's just not how they want to enjoy films, and that's absolutely fine. But if, like me, you find a lot of satisfaction in being able to piece together a film after the fact and go back to it with a new perspective and see things differently, I think you're going to really, really enjoy Tenet if you can keep up with it, that is. But what about you guys? Have you got a chance to go out and see Tenet? I know it's sort of trickling out in different territories around the world now. We've had it in the UK for a week. I think it drops in America this week. Although if you're in America and you wanna go see Tenet, please make sure that it's safe and comfortable because there is still a pandemic going on. I'm fortunate that one of my local cinemas seems to be doing a really, really great job in making the theater a safe space for people to go and sit down and watch it. You know booking seats around you that people can't sit in, all that jazz, social distancing. I felt really comfortable and safe in the cinema I was watching it in. If you don't, you don't need to go and see Tenet. You can wait. It's not going anywhere for a while. But if you have had the chance to check it out, please let me know what you thought about it in comments below. And let me know where you think it ranks in terms of Chris Nolan's filmography overall, because I'd be very interested to see where people are placing it. I'll see you guys soon for some more videos on whatever the hell is coming out and do it. I don't know. I, it's hard to keep track with 2020 anymore. I don't know. I'm going to go think some more about this film because it, I'm still I'm still working things out. I am. I saw it three days ago. I'm still a bit lost.